Hey guys, how's it going? I want to do a quick update on the Razor Blade 4K panel and do a little bit of benchmarks. Um, I've had some more time with it and I'm talking about the 17 inch. Today was my last day with it. So I wanted to do some last testing before I started comparing it to the GE76 because um, they're both 17 inches and they're both kind of pushing the higher end of the TGP limit. And I want to see if the 175 watts makes a difference against the 165 on the Razer. So in doing so, um, I came across some, maybe some things I wanted to kind of mention before I move on, um, especially in terms of the benchmarks. It, I don't know if maybe there were some driver updates or whatever kind of update, Windows updates, Intel, Nvidia, I'm not sure. But I've noticed that my um, benchmarks have changed so I wanted to go over those specifically, and I also wanted to talk a little bit more about the display. I'm able to fully analyze the display, and I've, I would really like to sh share that with you. So, but th there's just a few things I want to um, cover. Like, I, I, a lot of people are concerned about the battery. There's been a lot of issues about battery swelling and such. Um, but this year. Razer has a two-year warranty specifically on the battery, so I. I mean, I've never had issues. I mean, I've seen enough issues um, where it's definitely it's definitely something to be concerned about. I personally haven't had any issues. Um, but, okay, so moving on to the display. There's been some comments about um, asking if it's touch. It's not touch. That's gone now with the 144 hertz panel. And it's also... A matte display instead of glossy, and yes, there is a reduction in perceived resolution by moving towards a matte display. In many ways, I wish they were able to do both, get touchscreen, 144 hertz, and remain at 4K. Um, I, f I feel like the glossy panel on last year's model was the best panel available. And I feel like you lose a bit of contrast. And again, like I mentioned, just some of the perceived resolution when you do switch to um, a matte display. The benefit is you don't see any reflections. I was okay with the reflections. It didn't bother me. I think I would personally prefer a glossy display for the better clarity and the better contrast over a matte display. And I just wish there were more glossy displays in general. I'm okay, like I said, I'm okay with the um with the reflections. So anyway, um with that being said, I was able to get an analysis done on the 4K panel. So all right. So here is what I was able to read from the colorimeter and I was able to do a full display analysis. 100% of sRGB. I mean, no surprise there, right? 88% of Adobe RGB, which is a bit of a disappointment. Last year was 100% Adobe RGB, so I know if you're a photographer, that could be very important to you. When, uh, I mean, uh, when I was editing photos on the 17-inch from last year, it was such a glorious experience. I mean, if you own any one of those displays, like um, I think the, the Dell XPS 17 and the 15 non-OLED version also has 100% Adobe RGB. It just makes photo editing a joy, but I mean, I, I, I'm, I know that's not everyone, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that. I'll just move on. And we're getting 99% of DCI-P3, which is great more for video makers and also for movie watchers and also for games. So, I mean, it's, it's an all-around good panel. Oh, and 86% of... NTSC, that's the next benchmark that displays need to reach. Once they reach that, we're going to see um, a, a picture quality that we have not seen at all before. I've heard that the QD OLED panels are able to get much closer to that than any other th current display out there, even the LG OLED displays. And I did order the Alienware 34-inch QD OLED panel, I mean monitor, I, mean, I, I ordered it too late, it's not coming in until May, but I can't wait to get that, I'm, I haven't been excited for a piece of tech in a long time, maybe I'm getting a bit jaded because I get so much of them, but I am really, really pumped for this one. 
So anyway, with that being said, um, the tone response is good. The gamma re uh, measured at 2.2. Um, it's, you know, I mean, Razer does a good job calibrating their displays. And so now let's talk about brightness. Okay, so I measured the brightness and the contrast ratio, and I tested it at five different brightness settings um, from 0% all the way up to 100%. And I just want to start with the lowest setting, the zero percent bright, the the zero percent brightness. I mean, um, I kind of wish this number was a little bit better. I, it, the The minimum brightness is twenty four nits. Um, that's okay. You do want it to be lower if you're, well, if you're using your laptop in bed and you don't want to disturb someone next to you, or if you're just trying to wind down. The brighter it is, the more you're mind thinks it's oh my it's 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 sunshine time to get up it's so it's it's hard it's hard to use this laptop at night time in bed if you're just trying to look at some youtube before you go to bed or check an email or what, what whatever you do um the minimum brightness is not low enough and i think that's the metrics I'm, that's the metric i'm going to really be focusing on because i think it's important it's important to me and i want that to get better and um so moving on down the line the the brightness ramps up and the contrast ratio also ramps up too. And to my surprise, this panel is brighter than I expected. It's actually 489 nits. And I and I, I measured it in Optimus mode, but then when I measured it on dedicated mode, I actually got closer to 500 nits, um, which is amazing. The black point, however, is 0.47, which is not the greatest. I think... Personally, I want to be down to 0.25. Um, that's when the black levels start to look really, really good. So at full brightness, you I mean you're, it's a it's it's not going to get down to like the black levels of a 1080p panel or of obviously an OLED panel. But this is the same um, black point that that you would have seen last last year so if you look up any of the review the reviewers who do cover displays in this amount of detail as i will start going forward you're going to see very similar results and the contrast rate what contrast ratio was 1030 typically with 4k panels you don't get as good as contrast ratio it's just the way the panels are developed but i mean i'm really happy with this Especially since you're pushing 144 hertz and you're able to get above a thousand to one contrast ratio. That's that's I, I mean, for the technology, that's a really really good score. Um. So yeah, no, I I think I think I, th I think this is this this overall is still the best display on any laptop, and Razer knows that, and that's why I think, and I'm pretty sure that's why they have such a high premium on it. All right, so that's it for that. Um, I want to move on now to the gaming benchmarks. Okay, so on Halo Infinite, I'm testing the multiplayer mode, so I'm playing in low settings, and I'm re reducing the resolution scaler down to 53%, which is the lowest it could go. I'm doing this because I want to get the max frames. If I'm playing competitive, that's what I want. If you guys do want to see me test the single player, I'm going to crank everything up and... I mean, and and uh, to, to high settings and and start testing that way if that's something you want to see. For me, when I'm playing, I mean, I already finished a campaign, so like I'm at mo I'm only playing um multiplayer at this point. But let me know in the comments. Um, on 1440p, I know it's a 4K panel, but I t I tested everything in 1440p just just so I could kind of get a consistent score, so I could compare it to all the laptops. I got 205 frames per second, and a low of 61. And it's because they power limit the CPU. It I, I wasn't it, it it was pretty much just running at forty five watts for the most part, and it would ramp up occasionally. But it, but it, it, in most games where the GPU and the CPU are um are kind of being pushed, the CPU will, they Razer will not provide enough power to the CPU so it could boost, and it it kind of shows so. Comparing it to the to the Scar fifteen with the thirty eighty Ti, I'm getting two hundred fourteen frames, and with a one percent low of sixty nine. So, but I mean, it's a thinner chassis. It's it's it it is what it is. I mean, 
at the end of the day, I don't think it's too big of a deal. Like, unless I'm comparing the, the two of them side by side, I don't think I would really notice. But anyway, so moving on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And I, I wanted to retest this one specifically because I got different scores from initial from my from my initial benchmark video. So at 1080p, and this is this is all at the highest settings, I got 134 frames per second. At 1440p, I got 101 frames per second. And at 4K, I got 48. 0.27 frames per second and that compares very nicely to what I've been seeing so far so um, I'll, 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 I'll have a graph up of, of all the laptops I have so far and what I've been testing and how they've been performing so that, that's it moving on um, the for time spy I got on the GPU I got a 12,714 on the CPU I got a 13,378 for and the total was 12,899. It's neck and neck with the best of this year so far. I don't, it, this is the first year that Razer is actually able to get their TGP to a high enough level that makes it competitive with some of the big boys out there. So I'm really, really happy about that. I can't wait to see how it does against the GE76. On Overwatch, on low settings, 100% um, scalar though. I was, I was getting 281 frames per second and the one percent low was one sixty nine, and you know, just to kind of prove the point of the the scar the scar fifteen, I saw the 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 wattage and the CPU go all the way up to like seventy eighty watts, which was insane. So I mean, on on that laptop, I was able to get three hundred and six frames per second, which is, I mean, it it, it was enough to be noticeable. And the one percent lows, especially too, two hundred and eight versus one hundred and sixty nine. Um, that's that 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 was a noticeable difference. So I think if you play competitive shooters or anything that's more CPU bound, unless you really like the design of the Razer and you value performance more um, on CPU bound games, then I would still say that something like the Scar would be better. And I'm pretty sure that the G76 will perform better. And by the way, I have the um this right this right here is the GE66. Um, they're doing the same, th they're, they're power limiting their, um, CPU down to 45 watts as well, which I was surprised. I expected the GE66 to perform better than the SCAR 15, 3080 TI, but it's not. Um, but I'll save that for another video. Okay, so on Cyberpunk, it's a, it, it's a GPU intense game, so the, I, there's not going to be any surprises here. Prefer, about I got like around 48 FPS for each 3080 Ti laptop I got. Okay, so for Red Dead Redemption 2, same deal. It's a GPU bound game, so at 1440p, you're seeing the same scores across the board. On the Razer, I got, I got 79, and that was the highest score out of all of them, and I think that's because it has a higher TGP. Dying Light, another GPU-bound game. So 48 frames per second on the, on the Razer Blade 4K. On Borderlands 3, I'm getting 82 FPS. On Very Low, I'm getting 146 FPS. That's being beat by the SCAR 15, and I think, again, that's because the CPU limits um, are higher. The wattage on the CPU, I should say. So, in conclusion, the Razer Blade 17... Its performance is great. It's outstanding. The display is the best in the business. The it's it, it still has the build, the best build quality, and I don't know if if it was something that you're into, if if it was something you're very interested in, unless you're one of the few people who really, 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 really take um competitive shooters very seriously, and you want the extra edge, the capping of the CPU at, at 45 watts. Um, I don't think that'll be a big issue for you. And, and on a 4K display, you're never going to be taxing the CPU like that anyway. It's only if you connect this to um, an external monitor. And even if you take the 4K image and you scale it down to 1440p, it still looks good. But then you're still not taxing the CPU as much as you are as if you would go down to 1080p and you do not want to take the 4K panel down to 1080p, it does not look good because of the dithering. It looks worse, significantly worse than if you were to be looking at a 1080p panel. So I think 
all the right decisions were made on the razor blade. Um, I had to say goodbye to it today, but I have I have too many other things coming in. So, all right, I think that'll do it, guys. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.